Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. So this morning you might have noticed that DJI announced two new drones. They announced the Mavic 2 uh, line. There's a Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. And uh, stay tuned, next week I'm going to do a review on the Mavic Pro 2. But one of the features you may have noticed is that you can do a hyperlapse. And a hyperlapse is basically a moving time lapse. And I've got some good news for those of you who don't have the latest drone. I'm going to show you right now how to create a hyperlapse using any drone. In this instance, we're going to use the Mavic Pro, the original Mavic Pro. So let's head out to the beach right now and we're going to do the shooting part. And then we're going to come back here and I'm going to show you how to process those images inside of Photoshop and also inside of Premiere Pro. So let's get started. I want to shoot a hyperlapse right now. I'm going to fly all the way over there. Let's go look at the settings because one of the things I always do, I like to set this for shooting into RAW. See that? So the image format is RAW, you get better quality. But here's the thing I want to go into the camera settings here and I'm going to click on photo and I want to go down to a time shot. Notice 10 seconds is the minimum. That's not enough for a time lapse or a hyperlapse. So, you know, I've always kind of ignored that. But here's the thing. If you go in here and you change the image format to JPEG and then you go back and now we click on the camera settings, we click on photo, now there's all these other options right now. So I'm going to tip on two seconds and now I'm ready to do, you know, two second increments. I'm going to do a hyperlapse, so I want to do it really slowly. So I think the best way to do this is to actually start taking shots every two seconds and then use tap fly to get most of the way, way there consistently. The other thing you could do is set waypoints, but right now I don't want to set waypoints, I just want to do tap fly. So I'm actually just going to click, and now it's going to start taking photographs every two seconds. I'm going to go into multiple flight modes here. I'm going to click on tap fly, and I'm going to look way over there in the distance, and I'm, I see that point right there, and I'm going to tip go, and bring the speed all the way down to the slowest possible speed. And now it's going to slowly fly out, to that obstacle. So what's happening right now is it's flying out there automatically, taking a shot every two seconds, and it's moving at a constant rate, so it's actually creating a hyperlapse for me using tap fly. So let's see how that works. Okay, now that we've shot the footage, we're going to bring it into our computer and just put it inside of a folder. And I'm going to pick up from here inside of Photoshop. Now go down to your folder that says Hyperlapse, and you're going to be looking for the information at the bottom. On Windows, it's probably going to show that by default. On Mac, I have to click the options here to reveal this. And then you'll see an option that says Image Sequence. And then all we need to do now is select the first image. Now just a little tip here, make sure that you put these inside their own folder, otherwise it'll try and pick up some other photos, because what it does is it looks at the file name where it's sequential, and in this case all of these are sequential right there. So I'm just going to click open, and we're going to choose a frame rate, let's choose 30 frames per second, and click OK. And now we're ready to view it. Now notice up here it shows that we've got a video layer, and what we want to do is control that video using the timeline. So we're just going to go up a window, and then we're going to go down to the timeline right here. And you'll notice that timeline. Now we can expand it here. This doesn't change the duration or the speed. It just enables us to view it a little bit easier. Now I have other tutorials too on editing video in Photoshop. If you want to go more detail, I'll add a link to that underneath here. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to hit the space bar to play this. You'll notice this green line starts to form. And what it's doing is it's loading it into RAM. Right now you can see it's only playing at 3 frames per second because it's having to process that. But as it leaves this green line behind there, that's going to play in real time. So we'll just wait for this to finish rendering and then we'll look at it again. While it's doing that, I have a quick question for you. Have you ever done a time lapse or a hyperlapse before? Um, add a comment underneath and let me know what you think about this particular type of technique or whether you've tried it before. And uh, we're almost there. And one of the other things I'm going to do while it's doing that is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change the setting here to loop playback. Make sure that's turned on. 
All right, here we go. One of the things you might have noticed is there's a little bit of a pause in the middle, and that's because I did tap fly up to those rocks, and then I did another tap fly and continued. Um, so I didn't quite trust it to be able to fly between those rocks in one go. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to trim that little bit and get it exactly how it should go. So here we are in this area where we can see it slows down. See that? So we need to cut out that bit of stillness right there. And you can see it starts about here. So what we're going to do is just click, make sure we've got the timeline selected, and then just hit this little scissor tool. And that's going to trim it. Now if we go to the other side, notice it's not going to play back as smoothly because that RAM preview is now broken. So I'm just going to hit the space bar again and just let the RAM preview load up a little bit. There we go. And now we can see that in real time. And notice it starts to pause about there. So let's just click and drag that little area in there. And we're just going to do the RAM preview one more time. And there we go, it's playing back much smoother. Now another thing you could do is you could actually just use bridge and go into the still images, the shots I've taken, and just remove the ones where I was pausing in between uh, doing the rest of it. And once we've finished doing this, we want to export it. We're just going to choose File, Export. And then we're going to choose to Render Video. You're going to see the Video Render Settings. And what we're going to do under the preset here is I'm just going to go down to YouTube 1080. Give it a name, give it a location, and you just hit Render. It's as simple as that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into Premiere Pro here, and I'm going to show you how to do it in there, and it's actually much quicker. Okay, so in Premiere Pro, we're just going to create a new project. And then what I'm going to do is we're just going to click OK, just to get things started. Don't worry about all the settings and things like that. And then we're just going to import our media. Okay, we're just going to double click where it says Import Media to start. We're going to grab the first image and then click our options again. Make sure Image Sequence is turned on. Click Import. And then we get an image sequence. It's that easy inside of Premiere. And then we're just going to click and drag this to create a new sequence there based on those settings. And there it is inside of Premiere Pro. And if we want to get rid of that little pause there, we just do exactly the same thing we did before. Grab the razor blade tool, pat it here, and get it right where it stops, which would be right there. Let me trim it and go here. We're just moving forward. I'm zoomed right in. That's the next one when it starts to move forward. Close that gap. Let's get rid of the gap there. Select it and hit delete. And we're ready to go. And quickly, let's talk about exporting it. If we want to render this, we're just going to choose File. We're going to choose to Export Media. And then you can see it right there. We can grab a uh, setting here. If we wanted to do 1080 or 4K, we could do either of those. Actually, I'm just going to go down to YouTube 1080. And if we look under the source, that's what it looks like. Under the output, it's right there. And we're just going to give it a name. And hit save. And then just hit export. So even if you're not working with a drone, you can still do these hyperlapses just handheld with a camera. Or even better still, is put your camera on time lapse. And if you've got some kind of a handheld gimbal, you can go ahead and you can do that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, smash that like button into dust. Um, and don't forget to subscribe because I've got new tutorials and videos coming out every single week. So hit the subscribe button and also hit that little bell so you'll get the notification whenever I upload a new video. Stay tuned for the uh, Mavic 2 Pro review coming up and also check out some of my other videos. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Thank mm -hmm. you.